Hi, good evening all of you. Hi, good evening all of you. Hope I am audible to all of you. I am clearly audible and you are able to see the screen and uh, presented in the slide. So today what I thought, you know, that uh, Delta uh, Ferrite, this is uh, actually the uh, coming up nowadays uh, in the uh, GMP news. So I thought that let us discuss and uh, make you aware about the requirements for Delta Ferrite in the uh, basically GMP building. So this topic is coming up continuously and also I thought to discuss this uh, uh, today. I will not take much time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes I will take it. So as you know that we are using uh, continuously the SS316, SS316L um, uh, material of construction for all the GMP manufacturing processes. So what is stainless steel? It is nothing but the alloy. So how we can further control on the Con co uh, contamination or the cross contamination through the uh, SS316 by controlling the delta ferrite content while we are welding the SS316. So that is what the today's topic. So before going ahead, I just want to share a disclaimer that whatever I got it, I took the material uh, from the different uh, literature sources, uh, sources and uh, GMP informations and all. So this is just purely for your learning purpose you can go through the disclaimer in detail so i just want to brief about uh, brief all of you about the uh, what is the delta ferrite you may not heard till this word since uh, long but this is a uh, mo mostly the engineering people may be aware about this word so what is mean by delta ferrite you know the delta ferrite content indicates the proportion of magnetizable body surface centered structure of the iron atoms in the stainless steel which otherwise has a surface centered structure so you can see this type of structure will be there and uh, this uh, delta ferrite is nothing but one of the material which is generated you can say during the uh, welding operation or orbital welding, welding operation of a uh, stainless steel materials because you know that stainless steel is composed of multiple different uh, materials it is alloy correct so the stainless steel is very much uh, require complying to the current requirements for, for uh, gmp operations and all so we are using the stainless steel for normal uh, uh, equipments or pipelines used for manufacturing and transfer of the gmp material but this point what i am sharing because not only this, but in um, so many medical devices also stainless steel is required. Some of stainless steel rods are used as an implant in the human body. So they also require to comply this delta ferrite requirement. So that is what you know we are discussing here. So you should know what is delta ferrite. So uh, that is the reason I uh, shared this. So basically how the, uh, you know, it is form, how it is form or how the concentration of ferrite increases. So the formation of ferritic proportions in a stainless steel production is influenced by its alloying constituents. So whatever the constituents are there in stainless steel, so uh, when we are you know preparing the uh, stainless steel, these uh, ferritic components are generated, only the concentration may vary. Okay. But heat treatment such as welding can also lead to transformation in the stainless steel structure to delta ferrite. So what happened when we are welding any pipe or we are using some, uh, we are performing some GMP weldings and all that time heat is generated and due to that heat, the ferrite con uh, content gets increased or you can say the delta ferrite component get increased. The delta ferrite content has an influence on the material properties of the stainless steel, primarily on its corrosion resistance. But how should the content specified in the stainless steel for pharmaceutical equipment or welding seams? That is the question mark. So here the message I want to give even from GMP uh, news, this is the same message that the uh, delta ferrite content is having a impact, like even you can say the good impact on stainless steel to avoid the corrosion of the material. Okay, that is very good uh, this one, but how much content of delta ferrite should be there in SS316? Uh, uh, so that is for pharma, that is what the uh, question. So we are going to discuss this. 
so basically there is a standard earlier there was a standard by basel standard 2 basel means you know it's a uh, chemical factory in um, basel area of uh, switzerland so they created some standard for this so this uh, ferrite content uh, was uh, suggest, uh, suggested by initially suggested by the basel standard 2 uh, in uh, uh, way back in 1990s so basically what happened they suggested the content of ferric content you know ferry ferrite content sorry not ferric ferrite content is less than should be less than 0.5 percent so su they suggested that whatever whenever you are manufacturing the stainless steel alloy they put a control limit for delta ferrite is should be less than 0.5 percent but now whether this is the correct limit today the answer to this is no today's perspective does not make sense with this limit so now what is the expectation today about this limit and why i am discussing is because if whenever you are doing the welding process and all you need to ensure that what is the concentration of delta ferrite so that is what it is explained here basically in detail that what is its impact on the stainless steel so it was thought that the low delta ferrite content would minimize the formation of rust in stainless steel but this has not proved to this case so earlier what was the thought that when if you feel that delta ferrite content is less then it will reduce the formation of rust rust means you know rust or somebody will say rough somebody will use the rust the this this way the people may term, uh, use the terminology for rust what is meant by this so basically when you use the stainless steel it becomes some blackening you know initially when you use the stainless steel material the blackening is generated some black specks are generated hope you remember you whenever you use a new equipment or new ss machines and all so then what you do you go for passivation to remove this rosh okay so this is generated due to the low content of ferrite delta ferrite in the uh, ss316 okay on the contrary the delta ferrite content should not be too low otherwise the welding of a stainless steel becomes more difficult and violet to become discoloration can occur on the weld seam so you might have seen that when uh, there is a gmp welding of a stainless steel so you might have seen so many pipelines and all where the uh, gmp welding is done on the ss pipeline you will find that there is some uh, you know the brownish or violet color uh, tinge is created or some color is generated on that so this is due to the very low content of a delta ferrite that is the reason it is recommended that not to have a very low content of a delta ferrite hope you are getting my point so this is what the discussion is going on that uh, uh, then what should be the content exact acceptance limit for delta ferrite when we are doing the gmp weldings and all so there are a lot of discussions are happening on this case so basically the expectations now and even many companies are following this now as a rule the delta ferrite content in stainless steel like uh, ss316l for of course pharma purpose the limit is now put under as a less than five percent so what happened the basal requirement was basal standard 2 was uh, less than 0.5 percent like 0.5 percent but now the pharmaceutical industry's purpose need to be solved otherwise what happened if you again i am telling you if the concentration is uh, we put a very less of a basal stand uh, very less of a delta ferrite in line with the basal standard 2 then what happened it will form some rush and then after that what happened when you do the even the welding it will lead to some uh, you know uh, violet or purple strike color so due to that it is recommended to have the limit not uh, limit of a less than 5% and not the 0.5% so if we maintain this limit means more than 0.5 less than 5% if we maintain this limit it ensures the good workability and sufficient corrosion resistance so that is what the experience of many pharmaceutical uh, professionals and now this same information is widespread and everybody is following the same during the recent years only thing now what uh, what is then uh, purpose of the basal standard 2 and what about the weld seams so here 
there are the many re repeated requirements with respect to the pharma and now still the justification on the acceptance criteria still people are discussing on that so the final message about the delta ferrite on all the discussions about the whether basal standard or pharma standard so what will be the final limit so then based on that it is recommended that the requirement for a maximum ferrite content for welds should be less than one percent for example it can be useful when processing 90 percent nitric acid at a temperature above 70 degrees a ferrite limit for welds of less than five percent on the other hand may be useful and can be guaranteed with a normal 316 l and the usual orbital weld, orbital welding process so this is what the then uh, expectation is so maximum uh, whatever we are discussing about the ferrite content for welds is recommended as less than one percent where you are using um, where where the ss part ss material will be exposed to the high temperature in presence of a strong acids like nitric acid and all so in that case you can uh, reduce the limit up to less than one percent but while on the other hand when you feel that the equipment is going to have more weldings and all uh, like uh, containers or tank uh, reaction tanks and all where the multiple weldings will be there multiple pipes will be connected so in that case you can make a limit of a less than five percent which can ensure the normal of uh, working and avoid this problem with respect to the delta ferrite and increasing of the rosh as well as during welding it will avoid the uh, the generation uh, you know the generation of the color yellowish or purplish type of color during welding process hope you got my point why i'm discussing because many places you might have seen where welding is done you will find the, some uh, you know the color uh, discoloration or color is formed in the welding area at the welding area so this is due to this point and we need to avoid this so that is the reason this point is always into coming into picture so whenever there are the weldings and all you please ensure that the uh, content of the delta ferrite is uh, well maintained so that you can ensure the compliance and you can avoid the cross contamination in the product okay so this is what i just want to share with you thank you thank you so much and uh, please one request is uh, many people are watching this uh, learning uh, but they are not uh, subscribing the youtube channel because in the youtube uh, i am getting the information about only the 50 percent of the people who are learning these topics are uh, you know subscribing the youtube channel it is absolutely free of cost so my uh, sincere request to all of you is please subscribe this youtube channel thank you thank you so much and ensure all time compliance thank you